What's up, AP Calculus students? Uh, I recorded a homework video for this homework last year, but I'm going to do it again this year because I want to make sure you guys understand the importance of this lesson for the future of this class. So I'm actually going to jump around and do the most important stuff first and come back to the stuff that's a little less important, okay? We were introduced to the concept of a derivative in this class. Okay. And we want to, I kind of want to get straight to that so that you understand like the Newton approach and where the Newton approach essentially comes from. So the overarching theme of calculus is slopes equal change. Really not just change, but rates of change. Okay. Rates of change. And quick, I'm going to go straight to this graph. If I want to see how a function is changing, and that's all the first semester is, except for the last unit, is just about like, yo, here's a graph of f. How is this f changing? Okay. That's the first semester. If you want to figure out on average how the function is changing, we will look at a slope, because that's change, but a slope connecting two points. We call that a secant line. Okay, so what you are given is x's from two to four. You have the y's. If you connect these two points of the line, you find the slope of the line. The slope will represent the rate of change. In this case, it's an average rate of change because we're talking about an interval of two units. And my function is not consistently doing that going down. It's like curving more. So that's why we have to say on average, if we have this long interval. So I got a down four over two, you could do rise over run, you could use the slope formula, like slope, net change of y's over net change in x's, you can use that you can do the change in your y's over your change in your x's. That's like your intro to slope. So I'm gonna do both. I can say down two over two or uh, sorry, down four over two or negative two minus two over four minus two. And we have a statement that we can say, and the statement's very important because we have to understand what our values mean in this class. That negative two is an average rate of change, I would say on average, this function f of x, since this value is negative, we can tell my function on average is decreasing. So I'm going to say decreases 2y's per x on the interval from 2 to 4. Have to say on average, because like between 2 and 4, 2 points, you don't know what's going on with your function, you know, in between 2 points very far away from each other. So anything could happen, but on average, this is what has to happen. If I go from negative one to four, connect these two points, we can see we'll have a slope of zero. I don't rise at all. Y2 minus Y1 is over zero over the course of X's. We'd say it's zero. Now, what's that mean? Like on average, my function doesn't increase, doesn't decrease, it's flat, it's constant. Or it's like it increases zero y's per x uh, from the interval of negative one to four. And what's important about this is that we're saying average, you know, obviously the function is not just going straight. It goes up and down, okay? Because my interval is very wide, I don't really have a good understanding of what my function is doing on all points. Okay. So the smaller the interval, the, the better you feel about understanding what your function is doing. Okay. Um, let's find some more average rates of change. And then if we start changing the gear to what calculus is, is worried about, calculus is worried about what is going on right here at X equals one. Okay. Now the key concept is that slopes equal change. 
if you want to find the exact rate of change or the instantaneous rate of change, you need to find this slope of a tangent. Okay. Boom. This is calculus slopes of tangents. Okay. Derivatives, instantaneous rate of change. Now this question asked me, you know, if you could find an average rate of change, which one would give you the best approximation for what's going on at X equals one. I'm not going to find the values. I'll do it later, but just like from negative two to four. Yeah. Obviously that's not going to be a good approximation. I go down two over six, negative one third on average, my function decreases a third of a Y per X over this entire interval. This interval is so big. I do not feel comfortable. I can see the slope. It does not look like what's going on there. From negative one to three. Yeah, no, from negative one to three, I'm up two over four. On average, my function is increasing a half of a y for, per x. That does not look like that slope. The interval's too large. But if I go from zero to two, I'm gonna have a winner. I'm going from negative 1.5 to two. So I'm going up uh, to three and a half over the course of two X's, like whatever this is, three and a half is um, seven halves, two, four, six, seven halves, seven halves divided by two. You guys got to know how to divide uh, is going to be seven fourths. How do I do that? Keep change flip. That slope is probably the best approximation for this slope, right? The smaller your interval, the more you understand about the change of my function. Well, if we want to find the exact rate of change, let's make our interval as small as possible. Let's take a slope of two points infinitely close together. Let's combine our limit and a slope formula. This is where really the class starts. If we want to find this instantaneous rate of change, we are looking for the slope of the tangent. Slopes are rates of change. The slope value of this blue line will tell you exactly how the function is changing at that moment. This is the instantaneous rate of change or IROC. And since it's tough to say this and this, it's long to say, mathematicians say, well, let's just call this a derivative. What is a derivative? It's a slope of a tangent which tells you the instantaneous rate at which the function is changing. It's going to be able to help you understand how is your function going up and going down, which is the whole purpose of like the first semester of this course, understanding how functions are changing. Okay. Now, Newton comes along and makes the understanding and the observation that if we combine my slope formula with a limit, this would be the right idea to find this slope. Just take your two points and put them infinitely close together. The way I'm going to show you him thinking about this process is using a calculator. Now, Newton didn't have a calculator, so we're like, this is kind of important just to set up the stage. But then we will get into Newton's method, which is like the most important part of this lesson, Newton's method. And we'll go back and calculate some more slopes of secants, okay? So... If I wanted to look at X cubed and I'm focusing my attention at X equals three, let's just go from zero to uh, one to four or two to four, right? And make sure I can get up past my Y coordinate. This will be a good portion of my graph of X cubed. Okay. Now, if I calculate the slope between two and four. This is me doing it quickly. Uh, this is a, you're not using your calculator on your homework. So you'd have to actually do this by yourself. You'd have to do 81 minus eight over four minus two, but I'm going to show you how to do it quickly with using your calculator. Uh, alpha Y equals I graphed um, X cubed. Watch what happens if you go alpha F4 Y1. Again, you're not doing this on your homework, uh, on your quiz or on your test. So it's like, oh, sorry, four cubed. 
is 64, not 81. Um, you could press Y1 of four and it plugs it into you, plugs it in for you. Um, you know what, I, it's actually easier if I just use the, the slope formula and I do Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This between two and four, if we look at the graph of X cubed, This is good. You know, the slope at three is how quickly the function is changing. If I look between two and four, you know, I'll have a decent understanding. It'll be a close approximation to my slope. So I get 28. So I'm going to get 28. And I'm going to feel good about myself. But you want to do a better job, have less uh, uncertainty. Understand the idea of a limit. Don't use four and two use 3.5 and 2.5. That's going to do better. This is like when I ask you, like, what two points would you plug into the slope formula? Well, like here I am plugging in two points that would do a better job. Because there's less uncertainty between 2.5 and 3.5. And all of a sudden we get 27.25. Well, let's make that interval between the two points smaller. Let's use our points right here and right here. This is kind of the conceptual understanding of, of Newton's kind of beginning approach is combining a limit and a slope formula. This is not something that's actually important to this class besides like we understand why this works. If we make our points closer together, there's less uncertainty there's less for my function to do crazy things. We start getting closer and closer to a value of 27. I think that the slope is going to be 27. More decimals, closer points, better approximations. This is the concept that, that Newton discovered, combine a limit and a slope formula. We're doing it right now. Now, if Newton had a calculator, he'd be like, all right, I'm good. I can just do this. When you ask your calculator to take a derivative, it actually goes one one thousandth on one side and one one thousandth on the other side. And it will give you this exact number. You're not going to be using this in this first semester. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to what's called take the derivative or find the slope of the tangent to x cubed at x equals 3. And I'm going to get this same number, 27.001. This is my calculator just using a slope formula. It could have done a better job if it used 3.00001 and 2.99999. It would eventually just round to get uh, 27. Okay. We could continue this process, but we can't do it at calculator, which is why the class starts essentially now. We learned in unit one about limits. We understand slopes from all of our past math classes. We kind of really know what they mean in terms of understanding the functions change. But now we need to understand Newton's approach to how did he find that the slope of x cubed at x equals 3 was 27. And I hate that. I'd rather have it at 2 uh, uh, because the slope at 2 is different than the y coordinate at 2. So I'll, I'll change it. Like, here's what he did. This is where we should really be paying attention. Okay. Newton found and discovered that. Every function has a unique graph or equation for its slopes, okay? Functions have x's and y's. Cool. There are some points on functions. Those points are x's and y's. I'm going to just plot some points down. What I'm going to do here is look at f prime. Again, this is where we should be really focusing. 
F prime, that's a prime, not a one, stands for the slopes of F, okay? Now, let's put down some X tick marks here. So I got negative two, essentially negative one, zero, one, and two. And what we're going to do is sketch some very small tangent lines. You all have to do this and practice this. This is something required for you to know how to do. We did it in class and it's brand new to you. So just like embrace it and do it and don't just copy down what I'm putting down. Okay. We're going to sketch tangent lines. We are going to understand the slope of this line represents how quickly the function changes. Like we would say X cubed at x equals 3 increases 27 y's per x, okay? We could do the same thing at x equals 2, which is what we did during class, and we would get values close to 8, okay? And we'd be able to do that. That means like at x, not close to 8, 12, close to 12. And we'd be able to say at x equals 2, x cubed is increasing 12 y's per x, okay? Like instantaneous rate of change. Back to, back to here. We know that this slope value is some very large positive number. Okay. Now, here's what we have on this F prime graph. We don't have an X axis and a Y axis. We have an X axis and an M axis. F prime's values are slopes. Okay. So if I said that we have a very, very large positive slope at negative two, at negative two, I'm going to graph a very large positive slope value, positive whatever. This is a smaller positive, so I will graph at negative one a smaller positive slope value. This is a zero. This is a small positive. This is a large positive, small positive, large positive. And if we kept going, putting more and more slopes down, we would see that everything would fall nicely, creating a graph. Move this guy over a little. Okay. Newton's approach was using the marriage of the limit and the slope formula, somehow find this equation of this graph, where if you plug in an X value, you'll get a slope value. If I plug in two, I should get eight. Eight is a slope. It's that slope. If I plug in three, I should get 27. That is a slope of this graph. This is Newton's approach. This is your approach. This is the rest of this course is getting this equation and knowing what to do with it. Okay. Let's keep making sure we understand that every F prime is unique to its F. Let's look at this F. It's got X's and Y's. Let's graph F's slopes. So we got X's and M's. I'm going to just pick some random points. I see positive, less positive, zero, negative, more negative. I can kind of see positive, less positive, zero, negative, more negative. I probably should be showing more work. You guys shouldn't be copying me down. You should be like, okay, this is a very large positive slope, right? Lines that go up have positive slopes. Lines that are flat have zero slopes. Lines that go down from left to right have negative slopes. Negative slopes. You should be labeling the slope values positive, less positive, zero, negative, more negative. Okay. We can keep going. We could find that we create this graph. Okay. Newton understood by marrying the limit formula, uh, the limit and the slope formula, he can find this equation where if you plug in X's into this equation, you get a slope. If you knew what the equation was, 
plug in X, get an M. This is an M for this equation. This is completely different and new for all of you because you're used to just like, you want to know more about F, look at F. In this class, do you want to know more about F? Look at its F prime. Look at its slope equation. That will help you know more about F. Okay, we got to be able to see visually what the graph looks like, and then we will work on finding the equations. For today, I'm going to give you the equations, but for future classes, we are in charge of finding the equations. Okay, here we have very close to zero into positive, more positive, more positive. So uh, over here, I'm close to zero. And then I'm going to have positive, more positive, more positive. You got to be able to do this yourself. If you're not understanding how I'm getting this and how I'm doing this, like do it yourself. Start with some X values. Put the corresponding X values here. Gives you your graph. There is some sort of equation that when you plug in an X, you're going to get an M. It's the M's of this graph. Very positive, less positive, less positive, less positive, close to zero. So just to the right of zero, I'm very positive. Then I'm less positive, less positive, less positive, close to zero. This would be what this F prime graph would look like. Again, when you plug in an X, you're going to get an M. We are going to be given what this equation is today. In future, you will find the equations. Okay. Let's check this out. Negative, less negative, zero. Positive, more positive, less positive. Looks like it's a zero right there. We got some negatives, less negative, zero, positive, more positive. There's a lot of points there. If you want to start putting like some tick marks down, like one, two, three, four, five, six, I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What do I have? Super negative slope. This is a super big negative slope. Okay. Super big negative slope. Less negative. Zero. A little bit positive. Less positive. Uh zero positive more positive okay i should be at a more positive here but then i hit a zero okay i'm at more positive now it's less positive then i hit a zero so less negative zero positive more positive less positive zero negative less negative zero negative less negative, zero, positive, more positive, positive, more positive. I'm sure I skipped a couple, but I don't have six over here. So boom, you can see, man, look at this graph. It's kind of complicated. It's not just a line. It's not just a parabola. It's not just a curve, but this is the powerful graph. This is Newton's approach that there is some sort of F prime equation where if you plug in X's, you will get slopes. These values are slope values of F. Okay. And how he did it is he married them this way. He married the limit and the slope formula. What does this mean? This is just the marriage of slope. This, my friends, is just slope of two points on F, H distance away from each other, where like the delta X is H, and this would be the, the change in the Ys. It's the marriage of slope and a limit. This is Newton's Matchmaker, matchmaker, he 
married the limits and the slope formula. These are the formulas for slope at a point. This is what Newton created to find equations for F prime. Okay. Marriage of slopes and limits equal slopes at a point. Slopes at a point tell you exactly how the function is changing, tell you the derivative. Okay. So like, I'm going to give you like this graph really quickly. It's like not super important. Again, like the next page, the last page is the most important page moving forward. You have to understand what, what we get. Okay. What we're doing moving forward. This page is just making sure you understand these formulas. Like this is the formula of an average rate of change. It's just the slope formula, right? Between two points. This, however, is the marriage of a limit and a slope. This is an instantaneous rate of change. Now, it's really tricky to see it because I'm using letters, but you can kind of see like this is a slope focusing on D, the location D. This is at X equals D. This is a slope of a tangent because we married a limit and a slope formula. There is no limit here. So this is just a slope of a secant. This is an average rate of change. Oh, this is a marriage of a limit and this is a slope formula. This is a slope formula. This is a limit. This is slope of a tangent. So we're just cool with like seeing, oh, that means slope of a tangent. That means average rate of change. This would be slope of a tangent. This would be slope of a tangent. And the purpose of this is just to like, look and be like, okay, this is slope at D. It seems like we're focusing at D. It's actually the same as this. These are both the same. Just looks two different ways. It's just different ways of marrying the slope and the limit. And you'd say the slope at D is negative. Again, this is not like super important. It's like just more conceptually understanding and making sure you can recognize this and see, okay, that means slope of a tangent. This means slope of a secant between C and D. I would say those are also negative between C and A. We can see that this slope is positive. This is tangent slope because it marries the limit and the slope formula. This is zero. This is tangent slope because it's a limit and a slope formula. It's tangent slope at B. It's positive. But again, not super important. Here's what's important. Newton's approach was you have an F. Find the equation of F prime. Now, what Newton did was take this magical formula, okay, plug the function into it. And after plugging the function into it, you're able to get equations. What Newton actually did was like generate rules where you're going to start learning rules on, on next class where it's like, Hey, if you have F using this marriage, using this crazy marriage of slope and limits, there is a rule that can handle polynomials where it's like, you want to find the F prime equation. Boom. Just do this and you get the F prime equation. All right. So let's make sure we understand what we have here. The functions x cubed plus one, Newton slash I did the work, and I'm going to tell you that the equation of f prime is 3x squared. So imagine this was x cubed minus one. This equation is 3x squared, just like shift it down one. Now, here's what's so important. 
what I need to get you to understand your brain. And like, this is the most important thing. What is F prime? F prime is your slope equation. Your slope generator. It's easier to see it when you see the graph. You plug in X's into F prime, you get slopes, M's. You plug in two into three X squared. Uh, you get 12. I don't know why I said eight. My bad. You plug in two into three X squared. You get 12. That value is an M. That slope is 12. You plug in any value you want or any value you're mostly asked to plug in, you plug it into the equation, that value you get is an M, okay? So it's a slope generator when you plug X's into F prime, you get M's. When you plug X's into F, you get Y's, right? You're used to plug in X's, get Y's. Plug in X's, get Y's. That way you can see where the graph is. This is a new equation. This is different. This is what Newton discovered, that there is an equation where if you plug in X's, you get M's, okay? So if I plug in three, because I'm asked to, into F prime, I get three times three squared, which is 27. I don't love this, but it's, it's actually fine because it's X cubed minus one. This is an M. F prime values are M's. This is the slope of the tangent to X cubed minus one at X equals three. We could say it's the slope of the tangent. That's one meaning. We could say it's the instantaneous rate of change of X cubed minus one. That's the second thing. We could say it's the derivative, but don't say derivative because you don't know what that really means. Like until like we've done it enough, like say it's the slope of the tangent, which gives you the instantaneous rate of change. You could say at X equals three, F of X, which is X cubed minus one increases 27 y's per x. Cool? All of this should be x cubed minus 1, not x cubed. This is a big mistake on my part because I hate getting the same numbers all the time. Plug in x's into f, you get y's. Plug in x's into f prime, you get M's. Again, the equations will be given to you. You just need to understand for today, starting next class, you need to come up with F prime and know what it means and know what it's used for. We'll be writing equations of tangent lines so that we can kind of see our handiwork. And here's the general form of an equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Plug in x's into f, you get y's. This is an x, this is a y. Plug in x's into f prime, you get m's. Plug in x, you get the m of f. You get the slope of the tangent to f including these points you can get your equation of your tangent line we could graph it and see it but i'm just going to go ahead and like start over and be like yo let's do this all at negative two i'm changing all the problem this is where the class really begins is understanding F prime, what it means. This was Newton's approach 
This is how his marriage of a limit and a slope formula developed an equation. Okay. Let's do all of the same questions. Let's use the function x cubed minus 1. Let's talk about x equals 2. Let's do this uh, negative 2. Let's do the same thing, making sure we understand it. Okay. If I plugged in negative 2, again, into the f prime equation that's given to us. It's like the graph of the slopes. That's the equation. I'm giving it to you. I get uh, negative 2 squared, which is 4 times 3, which is positive 12. Okay. What is it? It's the instantaneous rate of change. It's the slope of the tangent. We would say at x equals negative 2, thy function x cubed minus 1 is increasing 12 y's per x. Great. So that is an m. That plug in negative 2 gives me an m. If you plug in negative 2 into f, you get a y. f of negative 2, negative 2 cubed is negative 8, minus 1 is negative 9. I have an x and a y. I have an x and an m. I can rewrite my equation. It's going to be nicer to look at. y plus 9 equals m x plus 2. I'm going to be able to graph these now. It's beautiful to see it. I'm going to use Desmos just because um, it's easier to move around and do it quicker. Let's look at y equals x cubed minus 1. In class, we did like x cubed minus 2. Let's look at our first equation, y equals 27x minus 3 plus 26. Boom. I can kind of shrink my x's to be from like negative 2 to 4. And boom, there's that tangent line. Okay. We can see the slope is 27. That's how quickly the function is changing. We can see that we are uh, meeting up at this point, 326, the location of the tangent line. x comma y comes from our equation. The M comes from F prime. We have the other equation. Y equals 12 X plus one minus nine. I should be able to go down here. What did I screw up on? Oh, X plus two. be able to go down here when x is 2 and I can see this point negative 2 negative 9 that's the x comma y on my graph of x cubed minus 1 and I can see that green line has a slope the slope is 12 f prime gives you m's okay uh, literally I just answered the question why don't we change it up let's do uh, a quarter Let's do a half. Sorry, change it up. Let's make sure it's x cubed minus 1. All right. Same deal, though. Like, we have an equation. I'm giving you, for Friday, the equation of the tangents. In the future, you got to do it yourself. But for right now, I'm going to be like, yo, using Newton's marriage, I plugged in that equation, poof, it popped out 3x squared. That's the equation of the graph of the slopes. What's important? Plug in x's into equations, you get y's. Plug in x's into f prime equations, you get m's. We got an X and a Y. We got an X and an M. F prime is a tangent slope generator. It will give you the slope of the tangent. It makes finding tangent slopes so easy. This is 8 eighths, so this is negative 7 eighths. 
my equation would be y plus 7 eighths equals 3 fourths, my m, x minus a half. This is my equation of the tangent line. You don't need to change it into y equals mx plus b. This is it. Uh, in Desmos, I can graph y equals my m three fourths, x minus a half, minus seven halves, seven eighths. Boom. Right here, at this point, you can see your tangent. What does this mean? At x equals a half, or at the point one half comma negative seven eighths, f of x is increasing three fourths of a y per x. This value is an m. It's an m of a tangent, which tells you exactly how the function is changing. If it's positive, it's increasing. If it's negative, it's decreasing. At x equals a half, f is increasing three-fourths of a y per x. That's the derivative. Okay. Do the same thing. x cubed minus 1 at x equals... I mean, negative 2, we already did. I wasn't even looking ahead. I want to pick a fun one. 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 One's a perfect one. Was I supposed to do one? I haven't done one yet. Let's do one. Okay. Again, you're given the equation for your quiz on Friday. You're going to be given the F prime slope equation. Newton discovered there exists this equation. This equation will produce the M's of that equation. How did he discover it? Marrying the limit and the slope formula and then going at this an alternate way instead of using numbers, he's using equations. You will be told what the F prime is. Now we're going to about to do a couple other examples where the F prime is different. So let's like make sure we're good. Um, you plug in an X into F into your original equation. You get a Y. You plug in X into F prime, you get an M. I don't know what happened. You plug in an X into F prime, you get an M. If you're going to use your point slope form, boom, X, Y, M. Y minus Y1 equals M, X minus X1. We could see it. If we wanted to graph it, y equals 3, x minus 1. Boom, right there. That black line is my next tangent line. At x equals 1, f of x is increasing 3 y's per x. It's a slope of a tangent gotten by using this equation. Thank you, Newton, for discovering that these equations exist and that it's actually very easy to find these equations. Your job is to understand what to do with them. Okay, now I'm about to pause because my pre-calculus students are coming in. We are going to do the exact same thing using x squared plus 3x plus 2 and then x cubed plus x squared minus 2. So when I come back, I'm going to do the rest of the homework too. We are told, hey, there's another equation out there. So it's like start over. Close, 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 close. The equation is x squared plus 3x plus 2. It's a parabola. We are told that if you graph its tangent slopes, 2x plus 3, would be the representation of the tangent slopes. Now, I'm not going to graph that. I'm not going to graph 2x plus 3. But I'm going to understand how to use it. So I'm going to go into x squared or f of x or y equals 
x squared plus 2x plus 3. And then I have that its tangent slope equation is 2x plus 3. I'm going to give it to you. It's not 2x plus 3. Oh, sorry, x squared plus 3x plus 2. x squared plus 3x plus 2, 2x plus 3. A different f, a different f produces a different f prime equation, okay? This equation will produce m's, but it's m's for this f. We will get into that more and we'll make sure we do it for, the, for one more other situation. And then I'm going to speed through the rest of the homework because it's not as important as what we're doing right here, understanding Newton discovered equations for F prime, plug in X's, get M's. I'm sorry I'm being repetitive, but it's like so important. I got to make sure everybody understands. All right, let's keep going. So on the bottom of our homework, we saw X squared plus three X plus two and its magical formula, its tangent slope generator is 2x plus 3. Just to kind of show you graphically, if we did this, here would be f. This is x squared plus, sorry, this should be, yeah, this is right, x squared plus 3x plus 2. If I looked at slopes, I'd see negative, less negative, a zero right here, positive, more positive. It would be one of those straight line F prime graphs. So boom, there is that straight line F prime graph where we got the negative, less negative. We got a zero right here to the left of zero, positive, more positive. And this is the graph of 2x plus 3. These are M's. These are X's. These are X's, these are Y's. Very important. Plug in a value like three. You get nine. What does that mean? The slope at this point, X equals three, Y equals 16. The slope there is nine. This slope at three Why is it six? It should be like more like 20. Nine plus nine. I think this is the wrong equation. Oh, is it minus two? Oh, sorry. X squared plus three X minus two. So at this point, 3, 16, plug in X, get a Y, the slope is 9. Okay, cool. We can see it graphically, but now it's just like, let's just use the equations. Okay, so this is gone. This is gone. I'm really, really like doing this on an extra sheet of paper or just like finding space to put this on the side. I'm going to focus my attention at 2 and negative 1. I'd like us to do this for the last two problems. It's like, okay, new function, new tangent slopes. Plug in X's into F's, you get Y's. Plug in X's into F prime, you get M's. So I get 2, 12, X, Y. I get 2, 7, X, M. That's the slope of the tangent. It's 7. At x equals 2, this function is increasing 7 y's per x. Give me an equation of a tangent. y minus y1 equals m x minus 2. One more. If I ask you what's going on at negative 1, well, plugging in this x into f gives me a y, a location, on a graph, so I got 1 minus 3 plus 2, which is 0. Cool. 
plug in x into f prime, you get an m. Two times negative one plus three, that's an m. This is the most important thing. Newton's approach, use an equation. You get the equation, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to get the equations in the future. We're just gonna pretend Newton used the magical formula. We are gonna use the magical formula, but it's not gonna be as complicated as what you saw in class. Boom, we can graph those, we're good. The other question is x cubed plus x squared minus two. And I did the work for you. I'm going to give it to you. Starting on Friday, you're going to start finding it. But for your quiz, it's going to be given to you. That's F prime. Now, let's see graphically. I'm sorry that I'm taking forever. And if this is a waste of my time, that's fine. Skip it. This is not a waste of my time. And you're watching. Great. If you're just like zoned out right now, not great, Bob. Okay, this is what x cubed plus x squared minus two looks like. It looks very similar to x cubed minus two, but we can kind of see like positive slopes, less positive, zero. I think I got a little bit of a negative and then another zero and then positives and positives. If I were to graph this, the F prime my graph should come up looking like now what did I see? Oh yeah, just like I expected. Positive slopes, let's look at them next to each other. Positive slopes, less positive slopes, there's a zero slope. We got a negative slopes and then another zero slope and then some positives. Cool. Now that we've seen the graph, understand how to use it. Let's use x equals 1 and x equals negative 2 this time. I'm telling you to use all the equations, but like I'm not going to go into them. And uh, remember, plug in x's into f, you get y's. Plug in x's into f prime, you get m's. 0, that's an x, that's a y. That's an X. That's the M of F. That is the slope of F at one zero. I'm going to write the statement. I'm not even going to write the equation. At one zero, F of X, which equals X cubed plus X squared minus two is increasing five Y's per X. This is the slope of the tangent. This is the instantaneous rate of change. That's the derivative. The equation would be y minus 0 equals 5 x minus 1. Looking at negative 2. Negative 8 plus 4 minus 2. So that's negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. x, y. Plugging in negative 2 get 12 minus 4, which is 8. That's an x. That's an m. y plus 6 equals 8x plus 2. This is telling me at the point negative 2, negative 6, my function x cubed plus x squared minus 2 is increasing eight y's per x. Great, great. That's the most important page, this last page. The most important thing from this lesson is this guy. That guy, the F prime guys that will be given to you understanding how to use them. Newton, 
knew that there was a graph. He knows how to get the equation by marrying slopes and limits. We are going to use his marriage to find the equations in the future, but the marriage just produces rules that are very easily done. The most complicated thing is understanding what you have. Okay, now the rest of the questions are those simple average rate of change questions. So I'm just gonna blow through these, okay? And uh, I'm not even gonna talk. All you need is the slope formula and we will even say the statements and we're good. Um, maybe I'll just put it up here for you guys to check your answers. I'm not going over this because it's a slope formula and you guys know how to do this. If anything's confusing, it's dividing fractions, but whatever, suck it up. Yeah, it's fine. On average, the function goes down 9 over 4 pi y's per x from 0 to pi over 3.
on average, my function goes down 7 48ths y per x. Yeah, I know this is going to be negative 3. It's a linear function. So it's consistently decreasing at negative 3. I don't even have to do the work. It should make sense. My function is consistently decreasing at a rate of 3 watts per x. Linear functions, consistent rate of decrease. I'm skipping this one. Okay? That's it, guys. Understanding f prime and what it can do for you. Thank you, Newton, for the marriage of the limit and the slope formula and for a way to find slopes of tangents through this alternate approach, finding an equation using the equation of the slopes of f. Thank you. Makes life easy. Later.